Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea and welcome to the first GSL matches played on the new patch and possibly on some new maps as well as in the bottom left here of Elcioni we have Maru spawning as our blue Terran player and in the top right as our red Protoss it's going to be classic. Protoss versus Terran best of three from the GSL as mentioned it's going to be the f well, one of the first series or probably the first series in the GSL that is being played here on the new patch. I'm very curious to see what Honestly, both players have made for changes in their build orders or their general plans. Um, Classic is someone that has been a, a big supporter in the past few years of just the Phoenix Colossus lifestyle, really. He's, it's not a build anymore for him, really. It's a, it's a way of living. He wakes up with the Phoenix, goes to bed with the Colossus, and then they mix at night in his dreams. And that's how he plays as well. He just loves playing these big Phoenix Colossus styles. As he uh, uses his first pylon or second pylon to block the uh, Reaper hole, we have a factory coming down here on the high ground for Maru, just opening up with a standard Reaper expand, not using that Reaper to scout around, at least not that I'm aware of. No, has no scouting information here whatsoever, relatively unsafe against any potential proxies, but proxies are so rare right now in this matchup from the Proto side, because there's just so many builds that Terran does that auto wins against the proxy. Uh, Mainly, of course, the two gas opener that basically every Terran and their mom is playing at the moment. We have a sentry first approach coming out of classic. So this is different from what we've seen before. Why sentry first, you may ask? What has changed? Well, the one thing that has changed is that the necessity for detection isn't really here. You don't need detection as quick because the... There's just no mines that can stay invisible. The only invisible unit that can truly bother you quickly into the game is going to be some type of banshee, but that's going to be a fast robotics facility. Okay. This is an interesting build order, build order here. Sentry into adept into robotics facility. We have a stalker coming out. Let's see. Is he going to go for a jump here? Try to go for a jump, but can't really quite make it. The hallucination has now scouted exactly what is going on in the opponent's main base. Sees a cyclone. It's going to spot the third command center. This is a really big scout. And I almost, if I'm classic in this situation, would, would, would say, hey, maybe just cancel this Stargate. Get a really fast third base. Playing a quick robo triple base is such a good response against no starport openers and this is a non-starport opener coming out of maru the stargate is i mean it's nice and it's going to help you if a medevac ever shows up but with your scout you just establish that there is no starport so what are we really doing here still going to try and take a fast third that does seem a little bit much if you don't have an immortal on the way though uh, i'm not so sure if this is necessarily going to be super viable you have some good target fire there on the cyclone as the sentry is being targeted right now reaper almost dies as a sentry and adept have fallen cyclone with another lock on here first stalker goes down as well reaper will fall as uh, these marines and cyclones are going to get a couple of kills here at least three or four kills i can only imagine yep there we go five worker kills Brilliant little start here for Maru, who despite getting fully scouted by a hallucinated Phoenix, is still going to be managing to deal some damage, while at the same time also expanding into a third base. So, really a double sadness here for Classic. Because not only did he have a later third than his opponent, he also manages to take quite a bit of damage here, which really sucks. Five workers is a pretty big deal. These units were meant to be just as a, a kind of a defensive tool there for Maru, but Maru manages to do something with them. That's the power of the uh, Korean Terran here. He can do things that others can only dream of. As the first tank now pops out, there's still two Cyclones on the map. I don't think a single one has gone down. Yeah, just have a look at it. Just look at this resources lost just overall, like 175 gas. Losing that, that sentry sucks, obviously, because it will need to be rebuilt. We now have an Oracle on the way, which is, I mean... This is not a unit you want to be building at this point, right? Ooh, it's gonna get that surely, right? Just waiting, I guess, for, for some energy or what? Uh, the energy was too far away. He's actually gonna try and pretend to move across the map. It's an interesting move. He hasn't scouted the fact that there's a Stargate. This is a serious investment. So it's been 300 resources in the Stargate, 300 resources into this Oracle. So that's 600 resources into an Oracle that's going to hit six minutes into the game. There's just no way that this is going to be worth it. There's just no way that this is going to be worth it. Unless he kills like 10 workers. I just don't believe in the power of this at all. 
Uh, do we have any marines in the main? No. So perhaps we can actually deal some extra damage here. Gonna delay some of these barracks. Uh, four workers so far. Honestly, much better than I had expected. That makes that five. Six. Could perhaps get seven. Ah, missed targets there a little bit. They're still gonna get seven and piss us off. Good damage for this late of an oracle. As uh, Maru was absolutely not ready for it. Still, I'm not so sure how worth it that really was. I, I think I personally would have preferred having Blink here uh, behind all of this. Rather than now having to build phoenixes to potentially deal with drops. Oh, but the plan here is very simple. We're going to get a fleet beacon, second stargate. Where's that second stargate going down? It's in the natural as well. Low gate count. We have a forge up and I'd love to see a couple of cannons. Maybe one over here. Little cannon over at the third base. We have the double batteries coming up. Need some good vision with pylons on the side as well to deal with this. This can does not reveal a whole lot. The only thing it does review is that there's a bunch of Colossus here. A move that I recently grown fond of, by the way, when playing Phoenix Colossus in particular, and when you're walling like this, is taking out your own pylon in this area and rebuilding it over here. This allows swift movement between your third and your main base with the Colossus, which often is extremely vital against the initial drops that Terrans love executing against Phoenix Colossus styles. Just a little trick that you can definitely utilize. And it only costs you 100 minerals taking out this pylon if you went for a reaper wall and rebuilding it on the top. It helps so, so much. It really does. Maru, however, decides to go back home. We have straight up Tempest production coming in. He's rallying them towards the left side in case of any drops, I guess. We do have a double mine drop coming in right now. It's going to boost towards the... Well, hopefully towards victory. That's what Maru hopes. It's going to get a scout here instantly on the Tempest. I was like, oh, that's interesting. That's real interesting as... Um, Tempest are still trying to shoot. Colossus not quite going to get the full kill on both of them, but really, two mines and a medevac going down for just a single probe. That's definitely a good trade here for for Classic, who isn't sure whether he killed the medevac or not. He's just making sure that it hasn't flown anywhere. Could, of course, just look at the amount of units killed, I guess. Two kills on this Tempest, and then I guess there was a kill on the Colossus or a Stalker. Ah, Colossal, a Stalker already had some kills, so then it's hard to see. But that's often a good way to know whether you killed something. If newly spawned units have like a higher kill count. Like, oh, there were three units here. And my newly spawned units have three unit kills. Probably means that all of them died. Sometimes you just don't see it. Double CCs on the way. Double starports on the way. So. Oh, wow. As well as a ghost academy. We're heavily teching right now. Classic is trying to move out. This feels like a fake move out, though. He can't actually do this, can he? But at the same time, what does Maru have? Maru right now is investing in absolutely everything at the same time. I'm surprised we don't have a second armory quite yet with the amount of stuff that he's building. But that's double starports that just went down, right? I'm not crazy. Double starports that went down. He has the double upgrades here. He has the ship weapons coming in. We saw a ghost academy, a couple of extra barracks as well being plopped down. I always feel like against Tempest setups... It's really nice for the Terran that you can just build uh, an instant orbital here. You don't need planetaries on your 4th or your 5th base. They can just turn into orbitals, and that actually represents a decent bump in economy. Carriers now being added into the mix. Just a mere plus 1, though, when it comes to the uh, attack upgrades on the uh, air units here for Classic. That's surprising, because he has the cash available. He's getting shield upgrades instead, which makes the least amount of sense due to the existence of EMP. The moment your shields are gone, the armor upgrades don't work anymore either on them. That's just how the shield upgrades work. Um, we have 10 Vikings out against 4 Tempest and 2 Carriers. It also is kind of ballsy to play this style, by the way, against the player that is most known for being great at the late game. That's Maru. Maru has some of the, well, just has the best late game TVP, I think, out of anyone. He's so good in these situations. He hardly ever loses it if he gets there in a somewhat decent position. And he definitely got there in a somewhat decent position. It's going to get a scan in forward. I'm going to just take out that little zealot. As um, this is exactly how Maru usually does it. Big turret pushing here onto the map. And then just slowly but surely move forward. And I'm expecting Viking, Liberator, Ghost. And a fairly, a fairly heavy Ghost count eventually as well. For now, just six, but I've played personally, I've played games against Maru where he'll go up to like nine, 10, 11 ghosts. He'll have these liberators, he'll have the turrets, he'll have the Vikings. And if you don't have a high enough Tempest count, if you don't have the oracles for the spotting, 
If you don't have storms to zone out Vikings, life is just going to suck for you majority of the time. You have another Stargate coming in here. Let's see what these carriers are going to be capable of. There's four out currently. As the push... Uh, the, 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 the slow but sure turret push here. It's moving in forward. Zealot being sent out for spotting. There's no real upgrades for this ground army. Yes, there's a couple of Immortals, which is nice. As, um, ooh, carriers here. Moving quite far forward. Oracle has been... Well, he just attacked his own carrier. Loses the Oracle. And Revelation is absolutely key when you're using Tempest. Now we see the Vikings just moving in forward. Getting a couple of snipes there. Getting uh, some good shots. And I think that's the second carrier that just went down. Yeah, two carriers have fallen already. And not that many Vikings have gone down. No Oracle here. Means that the Classic is actually just in a little bit of trouble. With Oracles, this is much, much easier to deal with. Because you have that range advantage. You have that vision advantage. We have an aggressive sensor tower coming in. As well as a fusion core. More and more bases being taken here by Maru. Who just has complete map control at this point. Let's not forget about that. Classic just settled four bases. Here comes another attack. Moving quite far forward with these Tempas. Risky, one could say. Very risky indeed. Marauder count is low. As the plus two ship weapons is now about to finish off. I'd love to see a vehicle plating upgrade coming in here for Maru as well. As uh, personal cloaking is finishing here. We have the first lips now in production. More and more turrets coming in. And the more turrets there are, the worse carriers become. It almost feels like that the Tempest is the only unit truly worthwhile making in this type of situation. Because the carrier is just getting sniped. It is, it is too slow. Doesn't have a good range. Here we go into a big attack. No. Oh, some uh, good deflecting, honestly, here. Coming out of Classic. Making sure that his opponent doesn't walk up this ramp. I'd love to see a couple of Stormers. Now we have a couple of Templar here. I think that would be helpful to have. So, um, I thought I also saw an Oracle, yeah. Prime opportunity in my mind to use an Oracle here. Get a couple of revelations off on this army. There we go. Important that you don't instantly lose it. Eh? He is going to get this one. Two more starports on the way as well. Plus three ship weapons. We have three, three finishing up. So now we're starting with the uh, new steel armor upgrade. Maro's just scanning the sides. Like, oh, you don't actually have any bases, do you, buddy? As um, some good blinks. No Templar nearby to storm. Zoning storms absolutely key in these types of engagements. Every fight so far just seems to be kind of going in Maru's... Uh, Mara's direction on top of that is just expanding much, much quicker than his opponent. He's getting three more CCs. One CC on the left, a couple over here on the right. As long as he keeps mining as much as he is, and eventually perhaps even wants to build some more orbitals in my mind, because currently he's only at four. If you go up to six, seven, you can get rid of some workers, maybe have a bigger army. Turret's now pushing in forward. EMP's hitting. Big storm. That's the first big storm. EMP's hitting these Templar as well, though. Um, but that storm was big, and that means we now require a repair. Every single time this happens, you'll require a repair. And there's plenty of SCVs around. Six, seven SCVs that can all just repair these Vikings, and it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Tempest now, once again, gonna try to move in forward. Looking for some kills. Liberators move back just a tiny tad. Turret gets one shot there. Tectonic destabilizers putting in some serious work. Single Templar in front. Here comes a storm. No. Here comes no storm as one Tempest is going to die. Carriers. Oh, need to be so careful. This game is... Uh, it's honestly not... like It feels like Classic is winning, but he's pretty much a sitting duck as well, isn't he? Uh, this, this right side base is absolutely like, it's not secured. If at any point Maru realizes there's a base there, I think he can just send a small portion of his bioforce and just take it out. He can just take that out with a really a, a, a surprisingly small portion of his bioforce. Ooh, that's a big storm there, and that's a big disruptor. Barely doesn't hit. Vikings moving in forward, taking out individual carriers here, one at a time. Uh, Templar from in the back now coming in, as there's some storm still available. That was a bad trade, though. 13 Vikings have gone down in all of these trades. Four Tempest and seven carriers. On top of that, every single Colossus has fallen as well. I really believe that Maru should probably be thinking of the right side. I mean, this is such a key base. Even just sending a single Liberator over is going to be frustrating with that advanced ballistics. Because splitting off your army when you're playing air tools is practically impossible. While for Terran, it is very possible. Stamp is now moving in forward. Trying to get the snipes off. Not quite getting it yet, though. I mean, Maru just has complete control of this game right now. 
I'd love for him to take out these bases. I'd love for him to add a couple of extra orbitals. I, I really think, yeah, there we go. We have two, three. Oh my God, we have a bunch of extra orbitals. We're up to seven now, I think. Yeah, seven extra orbitals. I think that's a really nice number. And here comes the split off. This is what I was talking about. I would have loved to see this towards the right side, just a tiny tad earlier, because this base classic can still somewhat defend. But the right side, no way. Viking sharking around as well, looking for kills, looking for kills. Ghost moving in forward. I mean, this is this is not a position. Ooh, nice zoning view. I was gonna say this is not a position that Classic can easily hold. He throws in a couple of storms. And he's trying his best to micro his army, but it's not just working. As uh, he needs to move out of this nuke, and he's gonna move out of this nuke, of course. Mothership on the way. I like this. Perhaps, perhaps even uh, allowing for a couple of uh, aggressive recalls here. As here comes the next Oracle Revelation, and the Tempest once again move into position to try and deal some damage. Templar. Five in the back, one in the front. Can't allow all of them to get the EMP at the same time. Good feedbacks there. As um, ooh, this is gonna get cleared. Still have one, yeah, a couple of uh, storms available. This carrier is really not achieving a whole lot. We're gonna get a snipe on it. Storm zone doesn't quite work out either as it doesn't really hit anything. Mothership now moving towards the right side. Lots of cannons here. Would love to see a battery or two as well. Maybe some extra pylons, uh, as a matter of fact. Big scan coming in for it. Sees where the army is located. Resources lost 17k to 10k. And this looks bad for, for, for Maru if you just look at the bank. But if you look at the overall situation and the amount of infrastructure, the amount of bases that Maru has invested in, um, you can understand why I believe that Maru is very far ahead, despite having a smaller bank. Another thing, of course, is just the, the overall upgrades here for Maru continue to grow. Shield weapons still coming in. I'm really surprised by that due to the existence of EMP. Topside base once again is going to get cancelled. I'd love to see like an eBay being built here. Oh, turret. I'm completely fine with that as well. Um, eBay, of course, has a lot of HP. That's why I said eBay. But yeah, this is completely fine too. It's going to be blocking that base. Next is here coming down on the gold. Get a couple of big scans in forward as the turret. He just keeps creeping forward here as another sensor tower gets added in as well. Uh, Tempest actually in range of the uh, batteries can now help out. EMP is trying to blanket these Templar, but Templar have used most of their energy. This is a new, but there should be vision here somewhere. Do we have observers? Well, we have one observer over here, but it isn't quite in vision. The nuke is going to land, and I don't think Classic is seeing it, as he's going to lose his entire army here. And that is not looking good. He lost a lot of crap. I wonder how many resources. I think this has to be actually one of the biggest nukes that I've seen in my life. What the hell? He was 18k. 19k. That is 6k nuke. That's definitely very worthwhile. Holy crap. Actually the perfect nuke. Then he just straight up wins the game. Alright. It's going to be game one here in this best of three. <laughs> Good start. Welcome to our second one. It's always Maru, isn't it, that get the big that gets the big nukes. He did it what twice against Solar, now against the uh, Classic. It's kind of wild. It actually is kind of wild. Hate to see it. Absolutely hate to see it. That's uh, being chronoed out here. This is a gas first Reaper into reactor into a low ground CC. This is a move often considered to be a bit, a little bit risky due to the ability of adapts to harass the low ground CC without any units being out quite yet for the Terran player. Of course, with a Cyclone, usually you're going to be fine. So you always got to be careful. It takes a shot there on the Reaper. Really needs to be careful to not tank a second one because then in combination with the Shade, can always lose that Reaper. And that really sucks because he didn't quite get the information yet that he needs. Now Maru on the way of collecting that info wants to see that indeed there's going to be a Stargate once more. Not going to get the scout in. Second adept was on the high ground. As um, this adept probably is going to get taken out by the Cyclone, I figure, because there's a Cyclone coming out. Uh, I could get the SCV, but might just... Yeah, it's barely just going to get it. I think Maru turned around too quickly there with that SCV. Is Reaper now moving in? Both players going to lose their scout. Oh! Did he get that? No, barely got the scout of there on the Phoenix. We have a, a battery on the way as well. Okay. 
I'm digging it. I don't hate it. I really don't. Now, in, in classic, classic fashion, there should be a robotics facility going down relatively quickly. I'm not expecting a second gate to be thrown down here. Yeah, this is a robotics facility build. That's just how he rolls. We have this Medivac coming in as well as a second Cyclone. Small supply block here for Maru, actually. As that uh, Adapter Rest did hurt him. We now have a third base on the way. So very similar build to the last game. This time, however, with a starport. So you just have a little bit more flexibility with your initial move out. Still going to be Marines, still going to be two Cyclones, but the, the Medivac, it adds a lot of complexity in the defense because it means that multiple angles can be attacked at the same time. It also means that these Marines are going to have a little bit of healing. Phoenix is now moving across the map, could potentially be very dangerous here for Classic as uh, the Cyclones are moving in forward. There is a super battery available, of course. Might need to be popped instantly. Phoenixes need to start moving home. No, it's going to go across the map. Risky move. Can't get away with it. Maru's probably just gonna lift up the moment he sees those phoenixes at home, no? Going to the main. That's what I would expect at least. It's not what he's gonna go for. That's a missed opportunity. Definitely a missed opportunity. What in the world is Maru waiting for? Like, this situation is not gonna get much better for you, buddy. Like, that single mine doesn't make that much of a difference. As uh, a drop in the main base really would have been sick. The moment you see the phoenixes on the other side, I think that's just such a natural play here that you should go for. Now the immortal is out, uh, the phoenixes are returning back home as well. Phoenix count, by the way, extremely low. Stopped it at two. Now gonna get a lift on the mine as the adept goes down. Gonna get a pick up on the marines as they will manage to get back to safety. Third base has finished up as the orbital starts. Extra barracks now being added in, relatively slow. Second Raven coming out, as well as the Interference Matrix upgrade. And a third Barracks. Uh, this is a build that potentially has some potential. Potentially. I'm not saying that it's gonna have potential, but there is a world in which I could see this work. Like some big type of 5 Rex play. With the 1-1 upgrades, 2 Ravens with full energy, and then just disabling like 3-4 units. Hey, it is definitely a possibility. 30C does seem like the uh, kind of the odd one out here. Because the 30C is just going to delay this push out, which means there's going to be more Colossus or there's going to be more Phoenix or more units that do something. Fourth base gets thrown down. This is off of two gateways, mind you. Force plus Twilight on the way. We have a Colossus being thrown out. Two more barracks added into the comp as well. It's gonna bring the total up to five. With the Ravens, I think this observer won't be safe for much longer. Second Forge as well gets thrown down here. I really like the position that uh, that Classic is putting himself in. I think he's gotten some good info. He had a decent enough early game defense. Now pulling this observer back a bit. Look at this animation, by the way, how beautiful that is. What is he even doing in there? It's kind of messed up. Guess he gets bored too. Observers are... They look good in general, you know? Well designed unit. One of my favorites. Alright, four depots on the way. Neat little supply block here coming out of Maru as he throws down the armory as well. This is Gravitic Drives, the upgrade for the uh, War Prisms. War Prism Speed. Forward base has finished. Is he just going to take a fifth instantly? That would be kind of a bald move, no? This also is a weird place to take a fifth. I often see this being taken as the fifth base. If he takes this fifth, I'd be shocked. If a Dark Shrine coming in, he's actually going to go for it. The madman. Is he? I think, yeah. Wow. Fifth base before his opponent even starts a fourth. We don't have a Templar Archives, however, so these double Ravens potentially could be very powerful. There's three Colossus out, as well as a single Immortal. And these Ravens, they have four Interference Matrixes ready. That means that all Colossus can be taken out at the same time. Some good maneuvering here coming out of, uh, of Maru. 
And here we go. What's the force field count? That's minus one Colossus. That's minus two Colossus. Force field not quite good enough. And this might actually just be it in this series. As we're gonna get the push in forward. Doesn't quite get any of the Colossus down. But a large portion of the Zealots will end up falling. Now needs to be careful not to over... Uh, overextend into this position tank is getting continuously lifted i have no clue how classic managed to hold this but he did manage to hold and that's really the only thing that matters here as he pushes this back and now we're in a situation where faster upgrades here for classic or at least the plus two attack is going to be quicker has a fifth base gateway count is at eight um is gonna go up to plus two dark shrine done already as well you know what's so funny about this build is that it hits so late that you almost forget that it's a possibility. And I think that's what happened here with Classic. Because if he was aware of kind of the double Raven, I think he just would have thrown down a Templar Archives and would have been absolutely fine. Now it's Classic's turn to try and move across the map. We have four Metafacts sneaking in. Well, it's not really sneaking in, just freaking bursting in towards the natural of his opponent. There's no recall available on that particular base. So what are we gonna do here? Well, I guess just walk back home. No, base trade is gonna be the answer. Base trade is gonna be the answer indeed couple of warpins at home right now for classic as he moves across the map with dts um has killed 12 scvs already still 78 workers to 57 has extra outside bases though cannons being added in there colossus now teleport back home and i think this was a very very positive trade here for classic who kept all of his production alive kept majority of his bases alive the vast majority lost less workers than his opponent and now he's in a situation where he's still four base against really um, like a three-ish base Maru. Maru has no four CC. And I think the only thing that Maru can do at this point is try to go across the map and win the game. Because how are you going to play a macro game from here on out? I don't quite see it. One big bonus for Maru is the fact that the robotics facility did get taken out as it was positioned in the natural. We have Zealots moving towards the right to deal with a potential attack there. We don't have a lot of vision on the map. So let's are trying to gather some of that. Pylon over here on the right helping out with that as well. Ghost now popping out. Perhaps another nuke research. <laughs> First last game. You never know. Sometimes it can help. Two more Vikings. Viking count is a little bit low to be honest. As a classic, I think, is planning on actually attacking into this. But without a prism, I almost feel like that would be a mistake. I'm actually very certain that that would be a mistake. No ghost, however. And no vikings. So technically, this this is as good as it's going to get for Toss, right? You have a maxed out Zealot, Zealot Colossus Immortal Stalker army. There's like two ghosts here. And uh, there are four vikings right now. Target fire with the Colossus is okay-ish, I guess. It's mainly shooting at, at Marauders, honestly. And so, yeah, this is going to get pushed back, but 21 workers do end up falling. Classic is just going to pull back for uh, just for a small second. So get a big push out, out of Maru. A 78 army supply. Immortals now being popped out as well. 3-3 is on the way. Sixth base as well coming in. I feel like Classic might have underestimated the position of his opponent, and he's going to try and base trade and i love this move so so much gonna get a big warp in into his opponent's main and every warp in that he gets right now is gonna be a huge warp in because it's going to boost his supply and his opponent is not in his opponent is not in his own production yet so you can see a, a bunch of gateways i think we're gonna get at least one more warp in here immortal's gonna get taken out that sucks scvs are with this army maru is just kind of uh, bum rushing over here now going for the natural. I think the main base is, is really the most important thing. Because now we get another warp in. Extra gateways or cannons here at these bases are going to be vital. Upgrades are not going to finish up either. Uh, so there's not a single DT here defending. These two maybe can still warp in a DT. Nope. We have a new Dark Shrine on the way as well as some extra gateways. Uh, I really think cannons here would be vital. As these forges are still researching and the forges are still alive. A couple of phoen phoenixes. A couple of probes here. Are trying to evacuate the cc is burning down still not a single cannon being added in Ooh, could potentially just repower them then get the plus three upgrades that would be that would be that would actually be pretty big gate count still growing pylon still alive very much so a couple of marines uh stay in the main base as new probes are being produced 
I wonder what the priority is going to be here. If it's going to be to try and repower the forges or to try... Ooh. What's that recall? Oh, that's quite a decent, decent sized army, isn't it? Oh, he's just going to give up this position. It's going to be supply block, though. Maru has not rebuilt any of his bases and is being revealed. These are the final buildings remaining here on the map. We still have quite some bases. Well, not really mining anymore, but we still have some bases. We have some probes. This is actually really scary. As uh, the production here is going to get taken out in the main base. We still have some production in this portion of the map as well. I think a cancel on these upgrades at this point would be worthwhile. Oh, it doesn't have enough pylon power to go for it. DTs could be sent in. Every DT will cost an EMP. EMP can reveal DTs. So technically, if you get 7 DTs out, you just win the game. If you get 7 DTs out, you win the game. Okay, money comes back from the upgrades. There's no Colossus here anymore. We have some minor mining going on. I wonder if the focus should be on pure cell. I really feel like a couple of DTs would do good. Because, first of all, it forces EMPs from your opponent, which energy takes a long time to come back. And second of all, if they miss an EMP, that would be huge. You could even put the DT under the Metavax, you know? So then you have to EMP your own Metavax. That would suck. Classic here is waiting for an opportunity to go in. Has 99 armor supply against 64. It's probably just fine. It still needs to be careful. Let's look at the unit tab here. 9 Marauders, 20 Marines, 3 goes. SEVs could make matters uh, much, much harder, though. Much more difficult. Okay, send in individual DTs right now. That's obviously a good play. Right? Oh, doesn't want to do it. Doesn't want to do it. Classic realizes that the longer he waits, the more time he buys, the better it's going to be for him. Uh, so this position is actually kind of wank. Uh, I'm just going to go for it. Probe's coming in with a surround as well. That's a cute move. Gonna tank at least a little bit of damage. Prism from the side too. Good Zealot Warping comes in clutch. As uh, Classic is going to take game number two. And ties up the series on Oceanborn. Game number three will be played on, uh, on Ghost River. The first new map that we get to see. Hate to see it. Love to see it. I don't know. It's a weird map to play. There's some uh, wonky new maps anyway for, for Protoss versus Terran. I'm not going to lie. Oh, look how cute this is. Look how cute this is. This was a marine opener. So many a Terran player here would have just sent the marine down to chase away the probe. And be like, hey, don't harass me anymore. But instead, what Maru did was that he kept the marine upstairs and pulled a second SCD. And yes, that is not very... And not a very efficient play when it comes to the economy, right? You're losing a little bit of mining time. But what it does do, it hides the fact that it's a marine. And marine into factory hits much quicker than, for example, a reaper into factory. Or, yeah, that's just really it. That's, that's the entire thing. So your timings might change. Now, luckily for Classic here, luckily for Classic, he's opening up with a sentry. And as a result, he's going to get quite a bit of information. He's going to get quite a bit of information here with this little sentry. He's gonna scout with it, hopefully with the hallucination. Oop. Maybe he wants to wait. I'm not sure if this is on purpose or not. Sometimes you want to wait a couple of extra seconds to, to scout something extra. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the case. I don't think that was the case here. Okay, so it's gonna open up with a robotics facility. This build is very weak against quick aggression. Very, very weak against quick aggression. That's an absolute fact. You just don't have a lot of units. So things like Hellion Drop would be extremely hard to deal with. Even if you get the full information. Because you could get double batteries if you scout it. It's hard to scout them. I guess with a hallucination you see everything. Alright. Stargate now getting thrown down. So exact same uh, setup as last time. Got scouted here instantly though. Got scouted instantly by Maru. I'm gonna go for a six marine, one mine drop. This is a Maru classic, it really is. Um, can drop into the main base, walk with the mine towards the natural, see if we can deal some damage with that. Where did this guy go? Da -da -da -da. Oh, he's actually just gonna relax in the middle of the map. We have a liberator follow up, which is also a pretty wild play.
Is this luck or brilliance? I don't know. I'm not even sure if he quite saw that. I think he did because he's moving into position to deal with it. He's going to try and get towards the mineral line at some point. For now, just happy by attacking this pylon. Mine has burrowed. Pylon in some serious trouble. And I think this pylon is just going to fall. Mine is walking in towards the natural. We have a full-on pro pool. As it could unburrow, doesn't unburrow. That is unfortunate. Because yeah, that would have been real nice. Here comes the hallucination use. As the mine is gonna get uh, saved as well. Creep control here by Maru. Honestly, I shouldn't be surprised by this type of stuff. Mine in the natural is also gonna get saved. So, uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't look like a whole lot was lost. But neither was anything lost on the side of Maru. And he had a fast third CC behind this. Like, it wasn't like he was banking on a quick triple rack speed. Like, no, not at all. Not at all. Once again, this Raven type of build. Interesting stuff. Really interesting stuff, actually, this Raven build. Love to see if it's gonna do a little bit more this time. Last time it felt like he almost had him, and then just kind of... Oof, he died. Is he gonna get cancelled temporarily? At least the construction halted. These SVs are being uh, blasted by the Phoenixes. Something that Classic does very consistently, by the way, that I just like to pay attention to, is that he gets a very low Phoenix count. Sometimes with Phoenix Colossus, you see players go up to like 7, 8, 9, 10, 6 Phoenixes. But Classic so consistently on a low Phoenix count with just two here right now. This uh, pilot is going to spot the Liberator. That should trigger a response. At the same time, a double mind drop is heading in. This is some cute uh, two-pronged aggression here coming out of our parent player. Does have the energy, uh, our Protoss that is. To use the pickup, didn't spot the Liberator with the pylon, I guess. I mean, he saw... He got the information, but he didn't process the information or didn't look at the mini-map at the right time. As a result, he's going to lose quite a bit of mining time. Ooh, he didn't potentially lose a Phoenix. No, he's not going to lose that Phoenix. Seven workers did die. Orbital moves over towards his base. Now let's have a look at the worker counts. We have 53 to 48. We have 1 1 upgrades versus 1 1 being research. But infrastructure wise, I love this for our Terran player. Five barracks being pushed out. Like, that is that is serious. That is really serious. Oh my god. He's going for a seven racks. This is not even a build. You don't even see this anymore these days. Like, what is the. What's the deal here, my friend? Is this going to be double tech lab or just pure marine production? Double tech lab. Jesus. Look at the amount of tech labs that we have. We're going to have five tech labs and two reactors. There's going to be a ridiculous amount of marauders here in this army. We now have a Templar archives. Because he scouted the raven. It's just a single raven and he cancelled the interference matrix. This is a wild push out, but it's a push out that could potentially even work. There's really not that many units here defensively for Classic. Classic who's had a crappy early game. Maru who had the early game of a lifetime. Planning on moving out here. Don't forget there's multiple angles here that our uh, Terran player can easily take. And an angle that he can always take of course is a drop in towards the natural. You have a bunch of Marauders going in there. Vikings in production already. This is a very low medevac count into Viking. Three medevac into Viking. You hate to see it if you're a classic fan here. Because this is starting to look quite scary. Drop here is good. The pre-split is good. Single Colossus is not quite going to do the job that it needs to. Robotics Bay will get killed. And that means no Gravitic Drive. That means no more Colossus. No more Disruptors either. The drop is going to continue on in towards the main base. We now have new Medivax in production instantly. As uh, Maru, I think, just made the mental note that he's going to lose everything here. But at what cost for Classic? Classic losing 20 workers. Still busy chasing this single Medivac. I do hope it gets taken out before it gets to unload. Couple of units go out. But this should be taken care of right now. That was a lot of workers. And don't forget that the reproduction ability of Maru is extremely high due to that 7 Rex that he has behind it. He has started the 2-2. He has started the Ghost Academy. He's going to go for a 2 Medivac Viking Ghost Push with 2-2. And I honestly have no clue at all how Classic is planning on winning. I just don't see it. He doesn't... He just doesn't have it. He just doesn't have anything here. Doesn't have to work. He's going to try to fight in the middle of the map. This is not a great fight for Maru. I'll grant you that. 
This was actually probably one of the worst setups he could have gone for, right in the middle of the map. It's not what he wanted at all. Tank? Uh, perhaps in danger? No. This is also pre-Ghost still. And the timing really is focused around Ghost, getting a significant amount of Vikings here, preferably six. Six to eight would be great against the Colossus via Phoenix count that we have right now. Actually, if he gets eight, I think you're hitting a, a really sick timing. But maybe you don't want to wait too long because you have that 2-2 that's about to finish up. You have those ghosts and the power spike with the ghost is freaking huge. I don't think Maru knows what timing 2-2 is going to finish on the proto side of things. In reality, Mar Maru has about a minute left to make a move. Um, so perhaps could wait at least for these two medivacs to finish up and then have a go at it. There's four Vikings out. Now a Stargate and a Fleet Beacon coming out. Second Stargate. Interesting move. I much would have preferred some focus here on the Disruptors initially. That is not at all though what Classic is going for. And that means his army is wank. They're absolutely... Absolutely awful. Pure Zealot. Couple of Colossus. Marauder count is at 19. EMP is going to connect with uh, two out of the three Colossus. Going to start moving back towards his super battery. Super battery gets sent way too early. Oh no. Premature batterification. I hate to see it. Oi, 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 oi. The overcharge gets sent too quick. Maru is being pulled back by this Zealot Warping in the main base. Let's just kind of clean this up. I'm honestly not seeing anything still here for Classic. Like, Classic is winning time for nothing. Like, what's the point here? He wants to send all... Like, he, he's not building anything that's going to win the game in the next two minutes. Like, he, he's, he's... He's he's throwing away Zealots so that he can build more Zealots and Stalkers. But there's no Disruptors. There's no Immortals being added in. We don't have Storm being researched. We're now going for plus one air weapons. Like, what is the plan here? What, what actually is the plan? Tell me. Because I don't understand it. Salad's here not even doing that well. As um, this is going to start moving back. Maru smells an opportunity. He's like, hey, you have 30 Zealots at my base. What do you have at home? And the answer is pretty much freaking nothing. Although with the super battery, that might just be enough. We have some workers being pulled. Vikings in the sky just absolutely wrecking this composition. Uh, Zealot run by is also being stopped at the same time. This just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And it didn't make a whole lot of sense to Maru either, who's now just walking. It's like, well, that sucked for you. Um, and that was great for me. Uh, what's up next? I mean, it's 84 army supply to 35. We have more reinforcements coming in with those seven barracks. EMP's connecting with all of them zealots as well. Good positioning with both the SCVs and just the main army. Production being taken out on the side of Classic, as Classic is going to lose this series um, with a 2-1 to one score. At a relatively close uh, game one and three, could have potentially won them. Maybe if he doesn't step in the nuke in the first game, he, he can still turn it around. And here, I feel like if there's just any type of secondary splash that isn't Colossus, it could have been fine, but that's not what happened at all. So GG gets called. Maru wins the game and wins the series, and that's going to be it for me today. I hope you all enjoyed this series. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye.